made another grass science uh, presentation video presentation <laughs> brought to you by oh, somebody who should just give up there's just no point no humans worth it anyway just sad facts too stupid you are likely too stupid just the facts so anyway the William Gelfeld has made a couple of stupid videos of some kind or other that I didn't uh, have bothered looking. But anyway, so there's one um, previous to the other one, his four minutes of nothing video, refuting nothing. Anyway, so he has one called Math and Gary's Gary. Math, the Math and Gary Incongruence Theorem. So whatever that is. So we'll play along. <sighs> Another video response to a comment of sort, you know, in the sense it's in the form of a video. There's no real point in doing that, playing the intro to a video. I really don't think it could be very smart if you're doing that. Okay. Um, so, the half a day, it wasn't going to blah, 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 but does anyway. I'll speed um, it up. I made a video. So, just another, so another rationalization and justification for um, a science, <coughs> physics, that's demonstrating itself um, to be corrupt and not very uh, effective at um, um, monitoring its own performance, having any kind of checks and balances against um, egos. Right. So somehow he's going to make an argument that it is checks and balances and that all these horrible articles that are just overtly flawed in huge, gigantic ways, images don't match what's being argued, um, the argument is we have a 25% margin of error, but we're measuring something this big. <laughs> you know, margin of error this big, but we're measuring this big. And somebody who, like, graduated sixth grade can't figure out that's fundamentally broken. And celebrity. That's right. Niels Bohr, Albert Einstein, Puffer, Bill Nye, the Oh dear, he's doing it in a computer voice. Alright, well maybe this video will not be worth the trouble. <laughs> yeah, maybe it won't. I think we do know. Alright, so Albert Einstein, Bill Nye, the science guy. These people could never be wrong about anything. They're gods. And guy, these guys are all the same. They are in it for the money. And money. Okay, so, uh, you know, they, they are in it for the money. I mean, Einstein was a millionaire. Let's not play around with the truth. He used the money from his Nobel Prize to um, weasel out of a marriage. He wanted to abandon his kids, and you know he used the money to do that. So let's not pretend this isn't about money and egos, idiot. I mean, you are an idiot. Yeah, yeah. That there's nothing. They're all honorable people just trying to do honorable things. And they're not trying to like, oh, that other guy's working on a similar theory. I got to get my stuff out first. They're, they're not, they're not human beings. They're not capable of making mistakes, of good intentions, and they're not capable of making mistakes of crappy intentions. And we shouldn't have any system of accountability because they're not capable of, of failures. <laughs> you know, human or um, uh, logical. 25% margin of error is totally a cool experiment. Cool. And all these corporate scientists, man, they are just in it for the money, man. They are sellouts, man. So, I didn't say any of that. My video was kind of specific. There's no checks and balances. There should be. They should be accountable. Just as I should be accountable. I shouldn't be just allowed to say, this is the way it is. And, yeah, I did a whole bunch of experiments, and I'm not going to show you how I did them. <laughs> and I'm not going to give you details. I'm just going to tell you this is the way it is. We figured it out. And because they're part of a club, they can do that. They can do like I do. They can say, hey, look, I've thought about this deeply, deeply. And, uh, yeah, this has got to be the right answer for a lot of logical reasons. You know, it explains gravity, it explains magnetism, does all the detail work, gives you a whole bunch more clarity on mechanical system. It's got to be right, because you couldn't make up something 
that was wrong. It couldn't fit in all, it couldn't hit all those right keys. It's too much like music not to be a song. See, that's sort of the proof I'm giving you. Now they can do that, and nobody questions it. And I do it, and everybody questions it. I'm just saying that double standard doesn't first need to exist, and second, it's why you're suckers. <laughs> it's why people lived under the yoke of the uh, with the yoke of religion strapped on their necks. Please hold out. Fuck it. I don't even have the energy for this shit anymore. And selling out and cutting corners, which will be the. So, so again, a simple argument that accountability is good and there should be some system that says to, especially when it comes to this idea that publication means something, when the publishers are clearly have a profit motive, um, that it's sort of important that you figure out, well, that's not a very good check and balance. Okay, popular science magazines being the publishers really probably isn't a great idea. Apt analogy for half a day's analogy. Now, I'd always like to say, like to say you know, that we should have a cooler time to go Okay, I did speed it up because, yes, that's... All right, well, I'm not going to do this. I mean, he's just playing parts of the video that can't possibly have anything to do with anything, so... Uh, I don't know. It's just a waste of time. You know, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to play the part where I'm speaking, and then i got to listen to his computer voice, and he just goes on and on here, too. So, I, you know, I, I mean, playing tons of my own video, all you need is the context of a quote. You, you don't need me to, you know, I mean, it's just so fucking stupid. Who's on the bus? That's in your own self-interest that the people who know how to do it, they're doing it. You could use airplane flying or any other analogy. Now, obviously, in this circumstance, this is no bus. There's no lives at stake. So, so he didn't speed up the, the, the video. He instead changed the pitch of my voice. And he thinks that's the same thing. Wow. I mean, just, you, you can you get lower than this, turd? Uh, anyway. Uh, the most money or makes the capitalist happy. Fuck you and fuck your capitalist's happy bullshit. Science is based on a method, and the fact that this method is used by corporations to build computers that run faster, PET machines that save lives, or... All right, so Microsoft was a great idea to give the fundamental, the operating system, okay, the basic wheel, a forever copyright, was a great idea, create all kinds of innovation, create all kinds of possibilities in computer science when basically it made every piece of software built on top of the platform the property of Microsoft. That was a great strategy for innovation, uh, development, um, uh, entrepreneurship, when if you did anything brilliant, Microsoft was just going to take it and consume it. And you saw what happened to search engines under Google's authority, okay, of the popularity engine, all the competition gone. Give it away for free for two years, kill every chance for anybody else to make any money, suffocate them all, kill them, so you can just own the territory. And now, simple things like comments on a YouTube video aren't even indexed by the Google Internet search engine. You can't search the Internet with Google. You search the Google fucking net. Good things. These are all great things. God, you're fucking stupid. Nuclear weapons that wipe entire nations out is just a tertiary function of the fact that science produces results. Science produces results. So again, it's not about producing the truth. It's not about acquiring uh, the truth. It's not about feeding, okay, innovation and feeding um, the process that will correct or fix errors. It's just about some sort of notion of uh, you know, how profitable is it for certain individuals. And that's all it comes down to. Then. So again, you're an idiot. Yes, you know, I'm 
Yeah, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter in this circumstance in any big way, okay, in the sense that there's no lives at stake. This isn't, you know, he's going to use comparison to uh, building a nuclear power plant. And yes, people have to be responsible for that, but he brings up that analogy. And it... The fact you think there is no lives at stake proves you're an unmitigated ignoramus, Gary. Oh, in theoretical physics. Arguments about theoretical physics, he thinks there's lives at stake. No, there's lives at stake, again, as in the implementation. So again, you gave nuclear power to the corporations, they cut the corners to um, engineer profit, and they fail, and it fails. And so that's exactly my point. The lack of accountability is a huge problem. And you're just pretending, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Positron emission scanners are based on the existence of positrons. What do you think those are? Yeah, well, again, yeah, well, apparently you don't understand how they name things. So, so you think they give to something a name, and that has something to do with its character. Like if they call it a positron, that it's something like an electron, or it's like a proton or something, because they called it a positron. And what it is is a a mathematical defect in the position. So you, I could argue that all a positron is is a, a, an ion, uh, in a sense. You're you're creating a deficit in atomic structure that has to be filled. Okay because the atom is unstable without that condition being satisfied. And that's what the positron is. So, so you, you are the ignorant one who thinks, oh yeah, it's a particle, because they called it one. But it's really not. And that goes for all the anti-particles, you know, bozo. <laughs> you know, I can play the quotes of uh, Stanford professors pointing this fact out. The, the, they're not anti-particles. They're deficits in fields by their understanding. Or fake. What about the fact that your computer would work? The semiconductors in your computer would work without quantum... So again, so he thinks quantum mechanics developed um, the integrated circuit or the transistor, and it didn't. <laughs> what did was the photoresistor which kind of gave it away. That look, you can do, you can make on-off switches. And now we can put on-off switches in a solid state device. And we can put a whole lot of them on a piece of silicone. They didn't need quantum mechanics for that. If quantum mechanics didn't exist, they still would have developed it. Yes, you still can understand that. In a circumstance where there's been three, you know, rather significant accidents um, that really weren't accidents. They were um, human error. They were design errors and, um, you know, just functional errors in making a bad plan. It's a bad plan. They had a bad plan. And clearly they didn't have anybody walking around saying, it's really stupid to have your generators underground, you know, when you're right next to the ocean. Why is everything with you a fucking analogy? We're not... Oh, well, he, he was using the analogy. He started the conversation with the analogy. And I thought it was an inappropriate use of my analogy, which was, yes, we should have competent people driving school buses. The question is here, I'm not the one saying physics degrees are a bad thing, or that if you have a physics degree, you're automatically an idiot. I'm not saying any such thing. I'm saying, sure, that should get you a louder voice. The point is, is whether that should close all of the conversation, whether they should be so elitist that they don't have to answer to anybody else or anything else, or any idea other than their own? That's the question, is whether a bunch of ivory tower physicists uh, that have been declared infallible and uncorrupt should just walk out and say, we did it, and everybody should just fall for it. Building generators were not next to the ocean, were not the three little pigs and the big bad wolf is blowing our quantum houses down, and... Well, whatever. I mean, the fact is Japan had a really poorly designed nuclear power plant in the sense that the tsunami wiped out all the generators. Really stupid. Fuck you. When are you going to talk about some actual science in this video? Brain tested. Bird's eye checked. Assess. Uh, I'm doing a response video, retard. Um, you know, so I have to go where the asshole making the video goes, right? Where are you going to talk about any science in this fucking piece of shit of a video? Besides saying, I don't think accountability is uh, that important. <laughs> That's all you're saying. Well, I think it's just fucking stupid.
testing is good. That's what I said in this video. Testing is good. Why, why do you want your elitists to go without being tested? Yeah. So, so again, but are they done? Do, does any of that process take place? They just get degrees that say you passed a few tests, right? You're talking about driving the bus. You don't even drive an actual bus. What the fuck have you done except play around with circuit boards when you were 17? Well, again, so that doesn't give you any a knowledge or qualifications. Actually doing something doesn't get you anywhere. So actually fixing cars didn't teach me how to fix cars, that kind of thing. I mean, it's just another completely insanely stupid fucking argument. Apprenticeship doesn't give you any kind of qualification. You don't learn by doing. That's your argument. Okay, it's really dumb. You're really dumb. Three years later, you could have forgotten everything because you just memorized some facts and figures. You talk about people being self-taught and about autodidacticism, but in order... I, I never... Uh, sorry, I, I never have used the word autodidacticism. I, I, don't, I don't waste any time with silly acronyms or, or name-calling, okay, for something. But yes, I don't care how somebody learn something, whether they sit in their living room and read books, or whether they go to an institution of learning, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm saying measure them by what they know. And clearly I know enough physics that I know how to describe what the basic principles are and how my theory satisfies the evidence. And you haven't pointed out how it doesn't satisfy the evidence. Check. Assess. Yeah. So, so again, but are they done? Do, does any of that process take place? They just get degrees that say you passed a few tests, right? You're talking about driving the bus. You don't even drive an actual bus. What the fuck have you done except play around with circuit boards when you were 17? Three years later, you could have forgotten everything because you just memorized some facts and figures. You talk about people being self-taught and about autodidacticism, but in order to call yourself an autodidact, you might have to actually demonstrate your knowledge. You... Well, again, I'm saying I have demonstrated in the sense that I've made a whole argument um, regarding a whole structure of physics, a mechanism that describes the evidence regarding gravity, the evidence regarding the effects of magnetism, the evidence regarding uh, the electromagnetic effect, um, and, you know, the conversion of magnetism into electricity, and the, uh, the, in substance, the nuclear forces. And you haven't provided a single piece of evidence where you're showing any inconsistency with what I'm suggesting is the mechanical cause and the effects that have been measured experimentally. You haven't shown any conflict or, or anything like that. Where I have showed how the two slit experiment has huge flaws in how it's presented, how the, how the data itself is, is misunderstood, and then um, the mathematics doesn't even have things like the slit width in it. I mean, fuck. It's overtly retarded. I've done nothing of the sort. I don't have any evidence that you understand the standard model that's supposedly bullshit. Well, I obviously wouldn't waste my time attempting to understand a standard model made out of a hundred um, particles that aren't even particles, misnamed um, energy vacuums and other kinds of nonsense. Yes, I think it's all... I think accelerator um, byproducts that have a lifespan of a millisecond aren't worthy of any wasted time trying to figure out, oh, what's this thing that doesn't exist in any natural state? The only way I can make it exist is to force its existence by creating a huge explosion, essentially, a controlled explosion. Um, and then I'm learning something. I don't think you're learning anything. I think you're wasting your fucking time. Why don't you prove you understand the standard model before you open your fat mouth? Again, what's to understand? You, you, could, you, could, you could spend your lifetime trying to understand it and you won't understand it. The physics uh, people can't even consistently describe what it is. So what are you arguing? You know, there, there, you, you can find 15 different interpretations of the standard model. What exactly the Higgs role is. You, you, you know where to go to find the the true um, theory? Bullshit. You're the one who doesn't understand. If you understood the standard model, you'd understand you can't understand the standard model. didn't understand any of the concepts. So let's recognize that having a degree doesn't make you a great doctor, doesn't make you a great lawyer, doesn't make you a great dentist, doesn't make you a great anything. Um, 
So you're still going to have to be tested uh, before maybe you should get the big projects. So there it was a good point for you to interrupt and come up with some sort of counter argument how that's not the, tr the truth. That we shouldn't make gods out of these fuckers. They should have to earn it every day like everybody else. They shouldn't be able to just walk up and say, ah, because of my past reputation as Nobel Prize winner, any kind of fucktarded nonsense I say is gold. So I'll come out and say there's no global warming, <laughs> and you have to believe it because I said it, and I have a Nobel Prize. Bullshit. You specify cooling flow rates, uh, radiation, barrier thicknesses and materials and such. Yeah, I'd like to speak. Yeah, you'd like them to be qualified. But again, what point is there in them being qualified, so to speak, if they've sold out to capitalist industry and they've basically said, yes, I'll, I'll engineer you as many cut corners as possible. <laughs> I will try, you know, I'll just... Again, and, and we not, we're not supposed to believe that the LIGO people were panicking. They've spent billions of dollars on this hardware and that there's not a, a, a very negative self-interest in manufacturing a result and that that isn't dangerous and that that's exactly the circumstance where there should be a little higher level of scrutiny where there's a self-interest like Eddington doing the experiment for Einstein you know the famous lensing experiment when he clearly had a huge bias that shouldn't meet a higher standard when there's an obvious self-interest involved there shouldn't be a higher standard. I think there should. Design it so you do have to put those wheels right on the sidewalk now and then. And you just have to be lucky that there's no fucking pedestrians walking there. Again, another irrelevant analogy. The corporatists, man, they are driving on the sidewalk, man. They are... No, I, look, the, the point is, is scientific publications are selling science. They're, they're exploiting it for profit. And they're your gatekeeper. And that's a lousy gatekeeper. You don't get that argument? You're too fucking stupid for that argument? Bringing the proletariat down with their quantum nonsense. They are building the wheel on the wrong part of the bus and driving on the... So again, he complains about analogies and that's all he's got for some kind of argument. The proletariat now is in, is in the argument through his uh, puking it into the, the, the conversation for no good reason. I mean, the argument's clear. There are circumstances where there is a corrupting self-interest, and in those circumstances, a higher standard should be uh, applied. Is, is that too, you know, that's, that's too fucking what? Logical for you to grok, right? That's just too fucking logical. Sidewalk and leaving skin marks, what the fuck? You plot like Thomas Friedman, if Thomas Friedman... So, again, another analogy, another comparison. So, okay, he complains about making comparisons, and that's all he does. So whatever this Friedman thing is, that has something to do with me. No, it doesn't have anything to do with me. Was a conspiracy theorist crackhead. Yeah, that's their design strategy, asshole. And it doesn't work. What I'm saying is having pop culture decide what's good science doesn't fucking work. Any yeah, so let's hear his response to that. Pop culture isn't a very good judge or gatekeeper. Now, let's see what he has to say. Wait, fuck you, this is the last video on this shit that I'm making for it. Okay, so another lie, okay? I mean, he's obviously got a video a day later, so what's the fucking point? Well, you can't understand that the explanations for why the math works, that comes second. Okay, even Newton had to get the math to work before somebody could come along and try to explain. And again, I don't have to get any math to work. I'm not disputing math or formulas, you idiot. I mean, I'll certainly say there's formulas out there that are broken. I'd say the two-slit math is contrived nonsense. The whole Huygens here, don't Huygens here, uh, put the slit width in here, don't put the slit width in there. Uh, I mean, the whole way they engineered it is bullshit. So, yeah, I'll say that math, part of that math is bullshit. But I'm not going to argue that the phenomenon doesn't have something to do with variables in the experiment, that the width of the slit's important, the width of the impediment's important, the frequency of the light's important and the distance to the target's important. Those are all factors in which you'll see on the fucking wall. I'm not disputing that, retard. I'm not arguing with that, jackass. Where have I said the inverse square law doesn't apply? Where have I... What, what fucking mathematical principle or formulatic uh, statement have you, have you evidenced that I've said, that's completely wrong? Where is that? Where's the evidence that I'm disputing mathematics? I'm disputing why it happens, not what happens, jackass. Why it happens, jackass. 
You can't figure out the difference between those two fucking things, you idiot. Newton was doing what happens. I'm doing why. Two different things, idiot. I'm providing the answer Newton didn't have, you stupid cunt. Math. Some tried to use the theory of ultra-mundane particles, but that theory flat out contradicted the math. Now, again, it doesn't contradict the math, so again, a lie. And obviously, the only flaw in it was the velocity problem in terms of creating some kind of resistance or ether problem. And I've already given two valid explanations um, for how that's mitigated by the fact that the only particles that have perpetual motion are the, you know, force bits, the photons, virtual or otherwise, the gravitons, whatever you want to call them. They're the only things that have perpetual motion, and everything else has to acquire velocity. Okay, and I explained how that's exactly what matter does. It, it absorbs force, which is velocity, okay, and maintains it. The perpetual motion, it feeds on it. It gains it, and it keeps it. And if it keeps it, it keeps it. It's perpetual motion then, you idiot. It acquires it through acquisition of force by contact with force, you stupid fuck. And so that explains where it acquires its motion, dumbass. And that solves any problem with um, particle gravity. Because the only problem was a thermodynamic problem, you dumb retard. You're the ignorant asshole just farting out of his face saying, you know there's some other mathematical problem. There isn't any other mathematical problem. That's why it was called mock gravity. Do you actually want me to play the Feynman clip for a sixth fucking time? I'll play Feynman explaining to you how it fits, except for one problem. Well, I solved the one problem, asshole. Newsflash. I mean, really, you want me to play Feynman doing it again? There was no way to make that particular explanation consistent with the fact that... Yeah, again, bullshit. The math and the measurements confirming the math worked out one way and the stupid particle theory's math worked out a different fucking way. That's a lie, okay? You're just a liar. Again, it wouldn't have been called mock gravity if the math didn't work perfectly for all of the gravitational functions. It doesn't work for the velocity problems. Okay, so over time there would be a velocity problem. And again, I solved that problem. So just lie, liar. Hey, that is why physics is about math. No, it's about liars like you. It's about fanatic nuts who are glued to some sort of perception of reality and you will lie about other people, you'll lie about what the facts are, you'll lie about the existing evidence to defend your bullshit. And that's all this demonstrates. You're an example of the low character that exists in the world. And some of that low character exists in the scientific community. These fucking talking head bullshit artists are doing just what you're doing. They're rationalizing and excusing their delusions. Why do you think corporatists want there to be quantum effects and bent space? First of all, bent space... I, I don't even understand where I even suggested that's what they want. What they want to do is make money selling to idiots like you phantasmagorical bullshit. You don't think unicorns sell? You don't think mystery sell? Oh, that's turning into a mystery. Let's make it all... Yeah, that sells, asshole. This is, in essence, a mathematical construct. The explanation is... Henry Potter. They're just Henry Pottering over science. Well, let's see if we can put some magic wands in it. And, you know, then we'll have the, oh, the anti-boogeyman. And we'll have the good particles come to save the day. It's all the, they're Henry Pottering science. You fuck. ...is what's open to interpretation, but the fact that measured gravitational effects confirm Einstein's theory is not fucking... Okay, again, so we, we're always told we have this co confirmation with no evidence. So again, this complete lack of evidence of any confirmation for the whole of Einstein's theory. Again, his modifications to the field equations to get Mercury right have nothing to do with bending space and time. They have just everything to do with recognizing that the speed of gravity is the speed of light and that it's a one um, 
it's a it's a one body inductive force. That is, you have to you have to um, um, do the equations based on the body as a producer of gravity and the body of a as a consumer of gravity independently. You can't do what Newton did and shove them both into the equation at the same time. You won't get the detail then. The induction, jackass. Negotiable, period. You can argue that it isn't. I'll say, you, there's non-negotiable, period. So Eddington's experiment is valid, period. We will not accept your uh, claims that, oh shit, he was way in over his head. He's trying to measure something that wasn't really possible to measure with the equipment he had. So his res and his results are crap. And you're just going to claim, no, it's empirical truth. It's been tested. It's, it's the, the authority of the evidence is imp just so obvious and so unimpeachable that there's no point in even listening to an argument. You're, you're, just, you're just demonstrating exactly what I'm arguing. You're just God botherers. You're defending a dogma, you ignorant funny-haired kook. Accurate within some margin of error. For instance, it's possible that the speed of gravity is not the same as the speed of light, but... Uh, yeah, it's possible. Uh, it, for, well, where did you come up with that? So you're arguing your theory that there's somehow there's some evidence that demonstrates that? Uh, besides, I guess, LIGO now, because now they have to make an excuse why the gravity wave got here uh, at one moment, and we have to wait uh, uh, 1.7 seconds for the light to show up. You cannot ever, ever argue that time dilation doesn't happen, or that light doesn't shoot straight out of... Oh, well, whatever. I'm not going to argue this shit. I mean, relativity is completely unproven theoretical mush. So, fuck you and fuck that bullshit. I'm busy, asshole. <sighs> Hello? Goodbye. This is Obsidian again. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you want? I'm making a video. <laughs> uh, you want me to hang up? Uh, what? I'll call you later. Well, I guess that'd be better. I mean, I thought you called yesterday. You go already calling again a day later. They did make your video. I'll call you in a half hour then. Okay. Bye. 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 Uh, whatever. Anyway. The laser when you are moving. Those things are off the fucking table for scientific discourse. Corporatists are entrepreneurs who run businesses. They aren't interested in making a... Oh, again, that isn't the argument. With the corporatists, we know what they're interested in is money. The argument was pop culture. I used those words in the video more than once. Pop culture. Pop culture. Pop culture should not be deciding. They shouldn't be the gatekeepers for scientific integrity. Because Neil deGrasse Tyson is a fucking showman, a clown for science. That shouldn't be what makes the argument for what science is correct and what science is incorrect. What science has been tested and what science hasn't been tested. And clearly there's been no rational test applied to gravitational fucking lensing. Or gravitational waves. Make science so that they can sell DVDs of PBS Nova, you stupid prick. And if corporatists, as you call them... Uh, so again, I made it clear in my, in my argument that it was the, the pop culture was ultimately the villain here in terms of the bad judgment. The ignorant common man through the corporate um, sycophant, in the sense the corporations make money by giving the masses what they want to hear, telling them what they want to hear, not by telling them the fucking truth. And again, you can't get this argument even when it's explicitly made, the word pop culture is used and you still just, you, you fly right over it, and ignore it. And make computers and make money off of computers that only work because of fake, made up quantum math and other focus. Well, again, so this argument, he thinks that that, that has real integrity. That, that's a real solid argument that, that computers only work because of quantum mechanics. And if they didn't apply a, a wave theory um, notion, that they couldn't have possibly understood it as frequencies. And <laughs> they couldn't have done the math without wave theory math. And that they somehow couldn't have made the computer work. And that's just absolute bullshit. The computer was inevitable. 
once they discovered the fact that you can regulate voltages with a solid state device and that was it so, so it's just bullshit focus then to my mind so much the worse for your stupid ton theory you really are a lunatic so stupid ton theory you are a lunatic these aren't arguments of how it has a single inconsistency with what is established through evidence experimental evidence uh, to be a phenomenon. So show me the experimental phenomenon not accounted for in my theory. Go ahead. You say that the math is secondary and that the Rube Goldberg explanation is primary, but you can't make a... I, what I'm saying is, is that I don't think it should be all about math. That's what I've said. They teach it as if, if you know the math, you understand the physics. And what I'm arguing is, is no, you don't. And it's really nice to know the math, but it's more, under, it's more practical to understand the mechanism. You have to understand why the thing is doing what it's doing. Understanding by a mathematical formula doesn't give you any insight into what might be similar, unless you can keep all these formulas in your head somehow. And therefore, every time you see something, like a brick on the ground, you can do the formula, okay, mass equals uh, rigidity versus tension versus atomic structure. Oh yeah, that looks just like this formula over here. No, what you're looking for is the, the common um, um, variables. Understanding the variables, understanding mass, understanding motion, understanding momentum, understanding force. That's how to do physics right. Prediction if your explanation is of the form the tons tip and tap and rat a tat tat upon the interferometer app. Again, so whatever this bullshit is, I've made explicit arguments about how inter the, 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 the concept of a beam splitter is flawed. Where are you demonstrating how what I stated about what beam splitters do, which is create a diffraction uh, gradient and, and cause a, the beam to be turned into Newton's rings, where have you made a counter argument to that argument? And that a fundamental flaw in the in the the uh, the beam splitter is that the one path, the divergence of the Newton's rings will be dramatically bigger than in the other path. Aritai, tell me, are they tap dancing? Are they tiptoeing and tangoing too? Are they tipping and tapping and tripping and trapping and? Skipping? Yeah, whatever. This is an argument of some kind. This fucking bullshit. You're ridiculous. And scrapping as well. Are they stripping and strapping and ripping and wrapping and scrippy scrappy? I don't know why I'm showing the screen. No point. It's you see, not you doing have anything. to start with the math because that's something that makes the prediction that you can test. If you deny this, then it's almost like you don't believe that we can. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I don't think everything starts with math. Everything starts with observation. And clearly, um, you can understand conceptually what's happening without doing explicit math. So I'm sure Newton got an idea first. <laughs> you know, uh, so he was testing ideas long before he was testing mathematics. Idiot. And have empirical knowledge. You probably don't even understand what that phrase means. Empirical knowledge, look it up. Uh, yeah, whatever. The, the word is used by a lot of people in different ways. I just go by the emperor part of the phrase. And uh, so I would say it's knowledge of authority, but technically it's like saying ivory tower. An ivory tower is really nice, but, you know, obviously there's a flaw in it if it becomes just the emperor's not wearing clothes. So empirical knowledge doesn't mean much if the emperor's wearing no clothes. But I use the, the term myself uh, guardedly um, just for that reason. Uh, but I tend to think of it as, an, as a positive thing. Okay, empirical means it has met a higher standard, which is a good thing. Homework. Oh, that's right. You don't like doing homework, I remember. And. It wasn't about not liking it, but of course, every kid who likes doing homework would probably be called an asshole. <laughs> so. I, I don't, uh, you know, when I described who I was as a child, he's claiming that that's who I am as an adult. Um, you know, that nobody can change. So, again, just more horseshit rhetoric. You lie and say the slit with this in the math. Wrong answer. It is in the math if you look it up. You. Yeah, whatever. So, again, I'm not arguing math. So, again, 
what formula are you saying I am saying can't possibly be correct? So show me the formula I'm saying can't possibly be correct. Because mathematics isn't theory, idiot. Just like there's no Huygens in the math, idiot. There's an, a sine of angle theta. Okay, there's no Huygens. Huygens comes before you do the math. It's the reason there's a sine theta. It's, it, it's <laughs> you know. So show me in these mathematical formulas where, show me in Einstein's field equations where the bent space factor. Show that to me. Because it's not there. What's there is mass and velocity. So just keep playing in time. That's what's there, asshole. Fail. What makes you think you can do what Einstein bore for me? Dirac, Maxwell, Faraday, and Feynman all failed to do, which was unify the strong hand. Yes, well, again, I'm doing what Newton failed to do. I'm doing what Einstein failed to do. That's right. That's the implications of, of doing the unification thing, is you're going to do something that all these people failed at. That's just the way it is. So that's going to happen, whether you like it or not. I'll just inform you that Maxwell was an etherist. So he... You think there's an ether? Huh? Faraday was an etherist. You think there was an ether? Uh, Steinmetz? I can go down the list. All etherists. Do you think they were right? Are you an etherist? Before is when you fucking failed high school physics, I remember taking high school physics when I was 13. And believe me, in no Niels Bohr, in no Paul Dirac, and I finished high school when I was 15. But well, whoop de doo And now you're what? A maintenance man. So, yeah, you, and with really crappy hair and fat. So, yes, you've taken your 15-year-old your high school diploma a long fucking way. Do you think you're a genius? You're not. Your debate tactic... Again, it has nothing to do with me being a genius. I don't argue that I'm a genius, unlike, uh, you know, Ken Wheeler. <laughs> you know, that's not what I'm doing. I've even said in videos, I fell on it. Okay, I went out looking for something, okay, an answer to the two-slit experiment that was something like rational, and I fell on the idea of just thinking about photons, and I thought about, well, what if you, what if you make gravity like photons? And so it started with the gravity thing, and I did the gravity thing, and I said, well, that's really cool, it works. And then somebody pointed out how, yeah, well, that's a 400-year-old idea, and it's been dismissed. And I said, oh, shit, that's not good, <laughs> you know. But I did a little more thinking, okay, about this whole idea that the force is the only thing really moving, and all you're doing is moving bits of matter. You have to move the atoms. You have to move the electrons. You have to move the protons through space. Now, you, you idiots think they just magically move, but they don't. The only parts that magically move are the little bits. The big bits have to be pushed by a force, dumbass. And it gave me magnetism. And then magnetism gave me the the electron, the proton, and the nuclear forces. I mean, the process is online. It's all public, idiot. So yelling exceedingly childish insults at people over the internet. That's the way baboons settle disputes. Again, and this isn't a baboon video. You got baboon hair. You got a baboon voice. You can't, you can't give a shit about being anything called sincere or accountable, hiding in your little dark shadows with your computer voice. Um, and you're going to call somebody else a baboon. Amazing. While well, you make direct accusations regarding integrity and honesty that you can't back up with a single piece of evidence. A single mathematical equation, Gary has said, is impossible to be correct. Oops. That's obviously a telltale giveaway that you're not doing anything close to science. You need to shut up and get a job. Yeah, uh, yeah mm. whatever. So, I, so again, not an argument about how my physics is wrong, just arguments about how, you know, character assassination and attacks. And he, he thinks he's something other than a baboon. That this is something, this is the high ground, um, uh, uh, honest integrity argument coming from this fucking fat baboon. You think because you were a busboy in your teens that entitles you to never work the rest of your life? Well, whatever. That's not the truth either. So again, that's just such a preposterous lie. I won't even go into it. I mean, once again, I was accepted at college. I had a whole life to live, and all of that was taken from me. Now, you want to mock that fact. You want to mock what happened to me. Go ahead, but fuck you. Um, if you think I would have been anything other than an industrious person, you're an idiot. 
I worked from the time I was 11 and I didn't stop working until I was too sick to work. So you want to play this game like I'm some kind of freeloader by nature or I'm some kind of cheater. Well, go ahead and play the game. But the facts don't defend what you're doing. And this is just personal invasive character assassination, you fucking fat, smelly pig. <laughs> I mean, you're just a disgraceful, disgusting uh, argument cheater. Fuck are you? And you're sitting there telling fucking everyone else how to live and how fucked up everyone else is? <sighs> no, I'm pointing out how torture is bad. So if you have some notions in your head that make you an exploitness and, and, and end up getting you torturing other animals or women or something else, that that's bad, yes. If you're torturing sensitive feeling creatures, if you're hurting them unnecessarily, I'm going to be yes, sensible enough to argue that's bad. And you should find a way to stop doing that, asshole. Ooh, gee, that's not logical. Yeah, it is logical, jackass. I respect torture, you don't. I, you know, just as you can't respect the fact that obviously something could happen to an individual that could ruin their life and you don't think that's possible. They could have a disability. Oh, not possible. You fucking cunt. Get what you deserve. That's all I can say. Get what your fucking sick psychology has earned you. You know, I really hope they catch you killing neighborhood cats or stalking one bird soon. Yeah, well, I hope you can get cancer and die soon and horribly. Because really, if it has to happen statistically to somebody, it should happen to you, pal. Because you're just such a piece of scummy crap. Live chat rooms or whatever it is you do. Oh, and one other thing. You send a phone. Jokako and Lala JD to put a madre. Eco day to madre on your notche. You sick bastard. Whatever that was. <laughs> Wasn't even English, was it? No. Alright. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was real worth the time, huh? Yeah. Okay. So... Yeah, well, this is the this is the quality that, of the argument. Obviously, I've got to get a better audience. I've got to find something with a little more brains to argue with. And obviously, a hostile day can't manage that, so <laughs> uh, off I go searching. So again, I'll um, reiterate: I'm willing to do a, a live room with anybody who can be rational, reasonably civil, um, and argue uh, physics. So if you wish to defend physics, um, I'll take you on. We'll see who's, who's got something worthy of defense. Who's defending something uh, that the evidence supports. Oh dear. I hit the button.